What is the truth about Summer? When Jeremy heard Blair defending Matt and asking him to let go of him, he was very confused and it was evident from his face. Blair was able to gauge what was on his mind, but she had come out of the waiting room so fast that her heart was beating fast. She stood there for a while and calmed herself down. She then looked at Matt and said, you did the right thing by letting me know that Vanessa was on her way here. Matt stood there with embarrassment, and then, with some hesitation, he replied, I did not have any other option, Miss Cooper. As soon as Miss Hughes learned that Bart, sir, was here, and she began to text me constantly, she started crying, and she was asking me to let her see him once, but I had no idea that she was up to something like this. After explaining his side of the story, he started crying. Jeremy was taken aback while he was listening to their conversation. You should have informed us about this. We would not have given her a chance to do all this, and from what I have heard, Vanessa was not in town. How come she is back so soon? Blair spoke. While sobbing, Matt replied, Maybe she had lied to us, Miss Cooper. The way she was crying, I, I did not know what else to do. Just when I peeped in through the viewing glass, I realized that she had removed his oxygen mask. I did not understand anything, so that is why I texted you right away. I went inside and I told her that someone was approaching. That is when she ran away. Jeremy had finally begun to understand what was going on. Blair tapped Matt's back and said, Anyway, I will tell Mr. Scott about this when I get the right time. I do not want him to know anything right now. If he gets to know, he would get even more disturbed. Matt agreed to her and said softly, Yes, ma'am. Blair then looked at Jeremy and answered, Jeremy... Even you won't tell him anything about this. He nodded in agreement. Sure. Well, even I do not know how I fell asleep. I had slept right here and yet could not understand anything. Jeremy responded, embarrassed. It is okay, Jeremy. Now I am even going to be here. Unless Mr. Scott does not leave for London with his father, I am going to be here, said Blair. She then occupied one of the visitor's chairs placed right outside the ICU. After thinking for some time, Blair said to Matt, You do one thing, Matt. You should get out of here right now. Maybe Vanessa is looking for another opportunity to blackmail you, and then you would be forced to do something wrong. Maybe this time even I won't be able to save you, so it would be better if you go as far away as possible from here. Matt had taken a few steps to walk away, but then he turned around and asked, But what about Mr. Scott? I will explain everything to him. Anyway, as soon as he wakes up today, he has to take his father to London. So it would be better if you listen to me and get out of here. Now, if Vanessa tries to contact you, just tell her anything. But please, do not meet her, said Blair. Blair took a short pause and continued to talk. In addition to all this, I need you to know that the only reason I am letting you go is that I am trusting you. I hope whatever you said is true, but remember one thing. If I ever find out that you were part of this whole plan that Vanessa made, then trust me, before Dan, I would not spare you, Blair warned sternly. Blair sounded so scary that Matt replied with hesitation. God knows that I have not spoken one word that is not true, Miss Cooper. I am always going to be thankful for you for trusting me so much, said Matt. After thanking Blair, he left from there. Jeremy and Blair both sat outside the ICU waiting for the sun to rise. At around six in the morning, Dan woke up and came out towards the ICU. When he found Blair and Jeremy seated there with full attentiveness, he smiled and said, Wow, hats off to you two for doing your duties with such discipline. When Blair saw him, she got up and replied, So you are up, Mr. Scott. I hope you were able to sleep well. Dan looked at her with all the attention and then answered, When you ask me such questions, you seem to be my wife. When Dan compared her to a wife, she felt shy. Mm -mm, I will be back in a while, Jeremy interrupted and left from there. Blair had sensed that he had left because of her and Dan. He wanted the two to spend some more time together. 
As soon as he was gone, Blair was about to ask him about Bart. She heard a voice from Bart's room. Before Dan could even understand what had happened, Blair rushed inside. For some reason, her panicking was making Dan feel very weird and frightened. When he saw her rush inside the ICU, he followed her too. Blair had opened the door and sat beside Bart. Seeing her sitting beside him, Bart had a smile on his face. He removed his oxygen mask and said, So Dan called you too. This guy, I tell ya. She interrupted him and said, Mr. Scott did not call me Bart. I came here on my own. Anyway, how do you feel now? How is your health? Are you facing any problems? Seeing her so worried about him, Bart asked her with curiosity, I am fine, dear. But why do you look so worried, my love? Asked Bart. Blair answered his question with a lot of affection. When I heard some noise in here, I thought you were in some problem, so that kind of freaked me out. In the meantime, Dan was in the ICU. He moved forward and held his father's hand. You ate things that were not in your diet, and as a result, your blood pressure went up. Do you even realize that? Asked Dan. Bart did not reply to him and just kept listening to him quietly. Dan then occupied a chair next to Bart's bed. We are leaving for London sometime. The doctor has confirmed that you could travel, Dan informed him. But why so early, Dan? Bart asked in a very soft voice. Upon hearing his question, Dan replied with a lot of love. The sooner the better. The sooner you go, the sooner they will start your treatment. Then you would recover soon and get back home, said Dan. Upon his response, Bart said, But son, I want you and Alyssa to get married before we left for London. Upon hearing his suggestion, Blair felt a bit awkward. Hey, I'm gonna wait outside, said Blair and left the room. As soon as she was out of the ICU, Dan said, Seeing you in a condition like this, do you think that I would be able to have fun at my wedding? So first we will get you treated, and then we will think of getting married. Hearing his explanation, Bart was then left with no words. On the other hand, Dan was fuming upon the mention of his wedding with Alyssa. But no matter how desperate he was to tell his father everything, considering his health, he just could not. When Bart realized that Dan was thinking of something and looked worried, he said to him, Parents are the sources of joy. But look at me. I have become the hurdle in your journey of love. Hearing Bart's emotional words, Dan's eyes were filled with tears. It is only the responsibility of a parent to think of their kids' happiness all their lives. Is it not a child's responsibility to ensure his parents' happiness and comfort? Asked Dan. Bart gently held his hand, and while caressing it, he said, I am so lucky that God has blessed me with a son like you. He tried to make one last attempt. I do understand everything, son, but I do not know why I have a very unusual fear in me. I do not know if my treatment will be successful or not. Would I even be able to return to the U.S. alive or not? That's the reason why I was thinking, if Alyssa and you could have a low-key wedding, then I would die with some peace of mind, said Bart. Dan took a deep breath and said, Why are you being so negative, Dad? We have gotten an appointment with the world's finest doctor. If God would want, he would fix everything. You just stay brave and do not lose hope. Bart had nothing to say, but he was constantly looking at the door. Dan realized that he was waiting for Vanessa to come in. He got up and said, She is not in town, Dad. That is why she could not come to see you. Bart took a deep breath and said, Have you not told her that I am going to leave for London today? Now he had no clue why this information was being kept from him. Dan avoided making eye contact and said, Even if I tell her, she won't be able to make it on time. We would be gone by the time she gets here. Honestly, right now, considering her condition, it is not wise to give her so much stress. That's why I have not told her anything yet. But Dad, please do not worry. As soon as we reach London, I will make you speak to her on a video call. After assuring him, he too left the room. Jeremy got there and told Dan that all the preparations were done. Just a few tests 
tests for Bart were pending that needed to be done before they left. The tests were essential as he was going to travel. The doctor and nurse were very busy preparing for that. To spend those last few moments in the U.S., Dan had come and sat next to Blair. The way Blair had supported him throughout, nobody could have done that for him. Thinking about Dan leaving very soon, Blair had become teary-eyed. Blair also noticed all the love and trust in his eyes for her, and that was keeping her sane. Very soon, after all the preparations were done and everything was in place, Dan and Bart left for London. Blair bid them goodbye and left for home. She had already called the office to inform them that she would report a bit late. She reached home and nodded off. Even when she was asleep, she could not stop thinking about Dan. When Blair reached the office, it was noon. She neutered her cabin and kept the bag. Soon after, she received a call from Neil. He wanted to see her in his cabin. She got up right away and went to see Neil. She kept wondering why had Neil called her suddenly like that. When she entered his room, she spotted a strange person. But then seeing Amy sitting in the cabin, she felt a little comfortable. She wished a good morning to everyone and then occupied the chair placed right across Neil's. The way so many people are gathered here, it seems like some serious discussion is going to happen here, said Blair. She then looked at Amy with curiosity. Amy seemed to have been waiting for her to ask this question. You got that right, Blair. The discussion is going to be serious, said Amy. Amy then started laughing. Neil and that woman, too, began laughing. Then Amy tried to control her laugh and she said, Hey, you did not ask us who this cute lady is. When Amy highlighted that strange woman's presence, Blair looked up and took a look at her. Upon Amy mentioning her presence, that cute woman shied away. Amy started to introduce her. This is Summer. She's our future sister-in-law. And Summer, this is Blair, my college friend, best friend, and Red Fusion's managing director, said Amy. Upon hearing Summer's introduction, Blair was glad and said, Wow, so finally the wait is over. Hearing her excitement, Neil thought, for how long could I have waited for someone to love me back? So now I have finally liked someone. When Blair realized that Summer was the same woman Neil had liked, she smiled and extended her hand to shake hands with her. It's so nice to meet you, Summer, said Blair. Extending her hands, Summer responded in her beautiful voice. Hi, Blair, said Summer. As soon as they shook hands, Blair was shocked to find her hands weirdly cold. Amy then added, And now we are super excited and delighted to let you know that Neil and Summer are getting engaged tomorrow. Very soon these two would get married. Yes, this event is going to be a very low-key and private one, and since you are family, you are cordially invited. Amy looked at Blair affectionately and invited her. Blair was still looking at Summer, she sensed that when Amy mentioned them getting engaged the following day, Summer looked a bit stressed out. After having a little more conversation, Blair came back to her cabin, but she couldn't take that stressed-out face of Summer out of her mind. There was something about her face that seemed very familiar to her. The first time when Blair had seen her picture, she felt that she knew her. But no matter how hard she had tried, she could neither recall who she was that day, nor could she recall today. While she was talking to her, she did ask her if they had ever met in the past. That is when very politely she had refused to say that she might have ever seen her around. Although Blair pretended to have been convinced at that time, she still could not stop thinking about her. Is this her reality? What if she is hiding something from everyone? Wondered Blair. Episode 94, Accident or Escape. Blair's mind got tired of thinking about Summer constantly. Why did she seem so familiar to her? Where had she met her? Blair spent her entire afternoon thinking about all the possibilities. But even though she had spent hours thinking about her, she failed to recollect anything. Finally, her mind got too tired thinking about it, so she wrapped all her work and left the office for home. On one hand, Thoughts about Summer kept her disturbed, and on the other hand, 
thinking about the distance from Dan kept her worried. Although he had dropped her a text after reaching London, they could not talk in length. She had just laid on the bed after eating dinner when she got a call from her mother. Hey, yes, Mom, how are you? asked Blair. As soon as Blair answered the call, she asked how she was doing. Julia replied to her, I am fine, dear. How are you? I'm fine, too. You called so late. Is everything okay, Mom? asked Blair. Julia started to talk. Yes, baby, everything is fine. I just wanted to tell you that we are visiting Seattle tomorrow. One of your dad's friend's daughters is getting engaged tomorrow. His friend doesn't have many people in his life or any relatives for that matter, so your father has to be there as one of his relatives. If you do not have much work to do, then feel free to come with us, said Julia. After hearing her mother explain the reason to call her, Blair was lost, thinking about something. She then said, I do not know if I will get any time tomorrow, Mom, because my boss has a party at his place tomorrow. It's an important event which I cannot miss. Anyway, you guys get here and we could decide something for later. She then disconnected the call. When Vanessa returned home late at night, she was shocked to find nobody home. She checked every room but could not find Alyssa anywhere. I understand that Dan and Bart are still in the hospital, but where has Alyssa gone? thought Vanessa. She saw the maid passing by and stopped her to ask about everyone. Listen, where is Alyssa? I cannot seem to find her anywhere, asked Vanessa. The maid thought for a while and then said, Ma'am, Alyssa packed all her stuff and left from here last night. Upon hearing the words which the maid said, Vanessa was shocked. She left? But where is she gone? asked Vanessa. The maid lowered her head and replied, I do not know, ma'am, but I did hear her talking to someone about booking tickets for Germany. The news of her leaving for Germany was quite shocking for Vanessa. She thought for a while and then said to the maid, Okay, fine, you can go now. The maid left and Vanessa went towards her room trying to figure out what might have happened. Alyssa is gone to Germany? And that too, all of a sudden, why didn't she inform me? After all that could have happened that she had to take this drastic step out of nowhere, wondered Vanessa. She then kept her bag aside and laid on the bed. This woman is crazy, yeah? If there was some problem, she should have at least discussed it with me. Vanessa then turned around and thought, Anyway, how do I even care? She's gone good for her. I just had to pay back her father. But I do think that if she had gotten married to Dan, things in this house would have become super easy for me. But you have nothing to worry about, Vanessa Hughes. As long as you have your sharp mind, you do not need anybody. Nobody can stop you from achieving your goal. She then started to laugh. After laying on the bed for some time, a thought crossed her mind. She quickly got up and took her phone out of the bag and dialed one number. When the person answered her call, she talked very affectionately. Hello, doctor. I received the address. I'm so grateful to you. Thank you so much for helping me. And about your fees, I will get them sent to you by end of tomorrow. Have a good night, said Vanessa. Vanessa then disconnected the call. While staring at her phone screen, Vanessa had a very serious expression on her face. She clamped her teeth in anger and talked to herself. I tried to kill you two times, Bart Scott, but it seems you are not going to die before completing your destined time. That is why I have now changed my plans. I thought once you are dead, I will announce that I am getting the child aborted, but now, since you are not going to die any time soon, I don't have to give birth to this child. While talking to herself, she had a cunning smile on her face. Thinking about her next step, she started feeling dizzy, and she did not realize when she fell asleep. When Neil returned home late at night, he was surprised to find everyone was still sitting in the living room. He looked at everyone with joy and said, Wow, you guys are still up? Amy took the shopping bags from him and said, All of us were waiting for you, Neil. Ronnie has picked a few finger rings for summer. They all look beautiful. She wants you to finalize one for her. Neil was tired, and he sat next to his mother and said, You guys pick the ring that you like. Is it necessary for me to take a look? Ronnie caressed his head with affection, and she said, No, son, no. 
We can't afford to take a risk in your case. You picked the girl yourself, so now pick the ring is for your choice. We do not want Summer to ever say that we failed to pick the right ring for her. Neil was a bit weirded out hearing his mother. He straightened his back and then took a look at the catalog. Mom, you guys seriously say anything, said Neil. He then finally picked one of the prettiest rings and told his mother, I like this one. Now you guys can take a look and make a decision. Ronnie took a look at it and then said, Okay, well if this is your choice, then we like it too. Anyway, go freshen up and I will get dinner served to you. His mother then got up and went to the kitchen. Neil was then observing everyone's smiling faces. He felt delighted seeing every family member was so happy. But for some reason, there was a weird fear in his heart. A little later, he got up and went towards his room, wondering why he was feeling so nervous. Does everyone usually feel this nervous while they are getting engaged? Neil could not figure out if the fear in him was normal or was something else that was making him worried. The following day, Blair woke up early in the morning. Although she always woke up late on a Sunday, as her parents were visiting and she had to attend Neil's engagement party, she had to wake up early that day in the morning. Just after coming out of the shower, she got a call from Amy. Hello, Blair, where are you? Why haven't you reached my place yet? asked Amy. As soon as Blair had answered the call, Amy had asked her several questions in one go. She quickly responded, I am just going to leave in a bit. The thing is, Mom and Dad are visiting too. They have to attend some party in Seattle tonight, so I have to first attend them, and then I would get to your place, said Blair. When Amy heard that Blair's mom and dad were going to visit, she became a bit quiet and replied to her, Okay, all right then, you attend to them first, but get here as soon as possible. Yeah, sure, Amy, I will be there soon, said Blair. She then disconnected the call. Very soon, her parents, along with Aaron, had reached her place. Blair had already done all the arrangements. She quickly served some freshly squeezed juice and said to them, so you guys get some rest. I have to be somewhere urgently. Perhaps I was just waiting for you guys to get here. When Julia heard this, she spoke, Blair, I, I think we should get going too. She then looked at Pierre and said, hey, why don't you give a call to your friend and if they have left already, then we would reach the guy's place directly. Pierre nodded in agreement and then went to another room to speak to his friend. Blair was busy playing with Aaron when her phone buzzed. She took the phone out of her jeans pocket. I'm sure it must be Amy calling. Why can't these women have some patience? When I told her that I'm going to be there soon, why is she calling me every five minutes? Thought Blair. But when she took a look at the screen, she saw that the call was from the Bernard Mansion. She then thought to herself, why am I getting a call from the Bernard Mansion at this time of day? She did not waste another second and quickly answered the call. When Blair answered the call, Mr. Bernard's assistant said something that blew her mind. Julia was staring at her attentively. When she disconnected the call, she asked her worriedly, Blair, what happened, dear? Is everything okay? Whose call was it? When she saw her mother panic so much, she quickly pulled herself together and said, I have to leave for Paris, Mom. I have to leave right now. Mr. Bernard's health is deteriorating. He's extremely sick. After telling her mother what had happened, she quickly got up and started packing the essential stuff. While packing, she could not stop picturing Mr. Bernard. Mr. Bernard's assistant had told her that he was no more, but she did not want to tell her mother the truth as she knew it would give her a huge shock. That is why she ended up lying to her mother. She could not stop crying. The man who had saved her life was dead, and this thought was quite disturbing to her. There was a lot of hustle and bustle at Neil's place. Summer's family was expected to arrive very soon, and they were all ready to start with the event. Neil looked dapper in his blue suit. He could not even count the number of times his grandma and Ronnie had praised his appearance. He was standing in front of the mirror, gazing at himself. However, there were a lot of thoughts going through his mind. He was brushing his hair when Amy entered his room. Oh, Neil. Even Summer might not have checked herself in the mirror for so long. You can't seem to stop looking at yourself. Anyway, quickly get ready and get downstairs. Summer would be here very soon. 
said Amy. Neil smiled and then looked at her. Hey, listen, did you speak to Blair yet? She hasn't arrived yet, said Neil. As soon as he reminded her, she took her phone out and dialed her number. Well, actually, even her parents are visiting Seattle today, so she did tell me that she would attend them first and then get here. But again, it shouldn't be taking this long, said Amy. Amy just realized that Blair had disconnected the call. Amy then expressed some disappointment and said, Oh gosh, she disconnected my call. I sometimes don't understand her. What does she do? When Neil saw her get so worried, he said, Maybe she is on her way and that is why she disconnected your call. Wait for a while and then dial her again, okay? He then tapped gently on her head and while leaving, Neil said to Amy, Hey, now let's go downstairs. If we get late, Mom and Grandma would leave no stone unturned to screw me. They both started laughing and walked downstairs. Everyone was gathered in the living room, but Neil could not find the same excitement in people there. He quickly got down the stairs and asked, Hey, what happened? What, what's going on here? Before anyone could say anything, then dragged Neil in a corner to talk to him. We just got a call from Summer's parents. She was supposed to get back from Brooklyn today, but then on her way here, she met with an accident. They have admitted her in a hospital there, said Ben. As soon as he heard about her accident, his world turned upside down. He held his head and sat on the stairs. Blair had done all the packing, and while she was about to leave her room, Pierre entered her room. Hey, Blair, something happened that we were all scared of. My friend's daughter is neither answering any calls nor responding to any messages. Nobody knows where she is, said Pierre. Julia was shocked upon hearing about what had happened. She held her head and replied, Oh my God, what would we tell the guy and his family now? Pierre took a deep breath and then said, They have been told that she has met with an accident.